uh, Dr. Philip Gwen uh, from University of Delaware. The title of the lecture is Hamiltonian Dissection for Deepwater Gravity Waves. Uh, Dr. Gwen, uh, could you start, please? Uh, Philip? Yes. I can see it. Yes, please. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for uh, attending the, uh, the, the seminar. Uh, uh, I hope um, you're all doing well uh, wherever you are. So uh, first, I would like to uh, thank Suna and all the uh, other organizers for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak in this online uh, seminar series. Uh, it's been great. Um, all right, so um, I would like to uh, talk about um, some work I've been doing for uh, a couple of years now uh, in collaboration with uh, Walter Craig, um, who sadly passed away a few years ago. Um, Adibek Kerzan and uh, Catherine Sulem from Toronto and uh, Bo Young Shu, who is a graduate student here in Delaware. All right, so it's about modulation uh, of nonlinear water waves. So modulation theory has been extensively used to derive uh, reduced models for weakly nonlinear waves. And um, they're usually two limiting regimes. On one hand, um, you are looking at long modulations around k equals zero, uh, so the flat surface, and you're talking about long wave models like shallow water, uh, Buzinesk, Grenadi, KDD, and so on. So these are especially popular to describe waves on, on shallow water. Uh, on the other hand, um, you're looking at uh, long modulations around some non-zero k naught. So around some periodic um, wave trains. So uh, in this case, you're talking about envelope models like NLS, DISC, this and so on. And these are especially popular to describe uh, waves uh, on deep water. So the, the focus of this talk is going to be on the, um, on the second regime, in particular the DIST equation. All right, so I, I'm going to, uh, introduce some notation with a sketch uh, at the bottom down here. So X, that's the uh, direction of wave propagation, eta of X and T, that's the function describing the, uh, the surface elevation, G is gravity. And I'm going to consider uh, deep water. So the water depth H uh, goes to, um, uh, to infinity. All right, so um, the, the NLS equation is a, a very interesting equation, uh, but it's a leading order approximation. So it has a, a limited range of applicability. Uh, and so the DIST equation is the refinement of the, DIST, uh, of the NLS equation. So DIST uh, went uh, one step further in the perturbation calculations. Uh, uh, he originally did this calculation uh, for deep water gravity waves, and, and since then, uh, the, the model has been extended to uh, many other settings. So it's very popular uh, among the, uh, the, the water wave community. Um, this model can be derived um, by the method of multiple scales. And this has been the uh, traditional method. Uh, the, the calculations are, are, are notoriously uh, tedious. And uh, so uh, to, to give you an idea in 2D for deep water, the DIST equation takes this form. For A, uh, which is the, um, the, the slowly varying uh, wave envelope. So the first line uh, is uh, the NLS terms. And the, uh, the, the second line has the um, higher order terms from DIST. 
So you can recognize um, a high order linear dispersion. Uh, and then um, the, the high order nonlinear terms uh, in red and blue. And among them, uh, you have this uh, strange looking term uh, in A squared partial X A bar. And so the bar that's for uh, complex conjugation. And um, you also have this term in blue involving partial X of phi. And that's uh, the, the wave induced mean flow. And uh, it's a, a non local term. It's non local uh, because, um, and that's how usually it is presented in uh, uh, the, the calculations for the dist equation. Uh, it solves a, um, a boundary value problem for the Laplace equation in a uh, uniform strip, something like that where omega naught, that's um, the uh, linear dispersion relation for k naught, the uh, K-wave number. So um, another thing is that um, for the NLS and this equation, um, the, the solution uh, does not give you directly, say, the, uh, the surface elevation. Right? The solution is the, the, the wave envelope A. So therefore, if you want to uh, reconstruct the free surface from A, then you need to have a way to, uh, to do it. And traditionally, uh, you use a uh, Stokes expansion, like down here, uh, with a number of terms up to um, the third harmonic contributions. And these are determined uh, as part of the calculations, as part of the derivation of this equation. Uh, so the main contribution um, is from the, uh, the first harmonic uh, term, or if you like the, uh, the, the, free, the free wave uh, component. And then you have higher order corrections, so the other terms, and they represent the, the, the bound waves, bound because they depend on A. All right, so, um, so we're, going to, um, um, we're going to look at the, um, um, the, the dist equation. And, um, and again, the problem is about the long time evolution of uh, periodic Stokes waves and related phenomena like uh, the, the Benjamin Fian stability. Uh, in general, uh, some good agreement uh, has been obtained in comparison to uh, lab uh, experiments. Uh, strangely, um, unlike the dist, uh, sorry, unlike the, the NLS equation, the dist equation is not known to be a Hamiltonian PDE. And so a goal of this work is uh, to, to fix that. So we would like to propose a, uh, a Hamiltonian dist equation for um, 2D and 3D uh, gravity waves on, on deep water. So when I say fix that, um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the, uh, the, the classical dist equation as derived by uh, dist uh, originally, but um, the uh, Hamiltonian property uh, may be something important that um, you would like to uh, preserve um, in, in your uh, approximation. Uh, then we're going to uh, uh, validate the, uh, the results. Um, by comparing with uh, simulations uh, from the, uh, the, the full equations and the, the classical dist equation. And then uh, I'm also going to show you some comparison with lab uh, experiments. All right, so let's start with the, uh, the, the, the 2D problem. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's easier. And also there's something magical about the 2D problem. Uh, uh, you can do some nice simplifications and I'm going to try to show you that. Uh, again, the focus here is uh, gravity waves on uh, deep water. So these are the, uh, uh, the water wave equations in the Zakharov-Craig-Sulem formulation. 
for eta, the, the surface elevation, xi, the velocity potential on the free surface, and g, that's uh, the Dirichlet Neumann operator, the DNO, that gives you the normal velocity at the free surface. Um, it's known to have a um, canonical uh, Hamiltonian structure for a and C. And uh, so you can recognize the uh, characteristic uh, matrix given by 0, 1, minus 1, 0 uh, in the Hamiltonian formulation. And down here, that's the uh, corresponding uh, Hamiltonian in terms of the, uh, the DNA. And so you can take this, if you like, as some sort of motivation for this work. Um, the, the basic formulation itself has a Hamiltonian structure. So you may want to, or if you like, it, it would be natural to seek an approximation that also has this uh, property. All right, so the, the basic idea is to work directly on the Hamiltonian and, and stick with the Hamiltonian as far as you can. In particular, you would like to do all your simplifications, all your transformations directly on the um, Hamiltonian. And these include um, the elimination of uh, non-resonant cubic terms. So I'm going to say more about this um, uh, in, in a few minutes. And you also have some additional transformations related to the asymptotic regime. And to give you an idea, uh, this is uh, an example with some transformation F. So not only you need to uh, play with the Hamiltonian, but you also need to change the uh, symplectic, uh, symplectic uh, matrix J uh, accordingly. But as you can see, it's very uh, systematic. Uh, and also um, for the transformations that we have in mind, um, they usually involve some small parameter, uh, epsilon. So therefore you can expand and truncate the Hamiltonian in powers of epsilon. And the point is that uh, at each level of approximation, uh, you can always uh, associate a Hamiltonian and a, a symplectic structure uh, to your system. And that's what we want to do in the context of the dist equation. So the, the calculations are facilitated by the fact that uh, uh, in a small amplitude limit in, in the weakly non in regime, the DNO has a uh, Taylor series expansion eta, and you can use that um, in your Hamiltonian expansion. So you have these, uh, various terms, H2, H3, H4. So H2 is quadratic in A and C, H3 is cubic, uh, H4 is quartic in A and C, H2, that's for the, uh, the linear approximation, H3, H4, and so on. These are the nonlinear corrections. So H3, that's uh, uh, the, the term representing the, uh, the three wave interactions and H4, is the term representing the uh, four wave um, interactions. So please remember that H2, H3, H4. So in the context of gravity waves uh, on deep water, uh, it is known that uh, you can make a, uh, a huge simplifications. Basically you can remove all the cubic terms because they're not resonant. Uh, so that means that uh, there's a normal form for your um, asymptotic system. And this normal form is devoid of uh, cubic terms. And so in the Hamiltonian framework, um, you can do that through a uh, Birkhoff uh, normal form uh, transformations. And I would like to say more about that. And so the idea is that uh, this transformation uh, can also be defined as a Hamiltonian flow uh, governed by some uh, Hamiltonian evolution equations in terms of some evolutionary variable S. And so this Hamiltonian flow 
helps you go from some old variables to some new variables. And uh, this Hamiltonian flow um, has some associated uh, Hamiltonian that I'm calling here K3. So K3 because um, I would like to remove all the cubic terms. And, uh, and so the question now is, um, how do you find this uh, Hamiltonian K3 for these transformations, right? So if you can find the, the K3, then you know any, everything about the transformations and therefore you can remove all the cubic terms and simplify the Hamiltonian of the water wave problem. All right, so uh, in practice, you use some uh, Taylor expansions about S equals zero. So again, one more time, S, that's the uh, intermediate variable, the evolutionary variable for the transformations. Um, and in this Taylor expansions, um, all the uh, derivative terms can be expressed in terms of uh, Poisson brackets. And these Poisson brackets involve um, H, the basic Hamiltonian of the uh, waterway problem, and K3, the Hamiltonian for your transformation. And because K3 is a uh, homogeneous of degree three in A like C, and uh, any HN is homogeneous of degree N, therefore say the Poisson bracket of K3 and HN would be of degree uh, N plus one. Therefore, this tells you that um, the terms in red in the theta expansion of the Hamiltonian, so H3 and this Poisson bracket involving K3 and H2, these two are of degree three, right? So they have the cubic contributions. And so if you want to remove all the, contribution, the cubic contributions uh, from the Hamiltonian, then therefore you want to set these two terms to zero. So this is an equation relating uh, H3 uh, and H2, which are given, and K3 that you're looking for. Therefore, if you can solve this for K3 given H3 and, K and H2, then you can define um, your normal form transformations to eliminate all the cubic terms in the problem. And it turns out that uh, you can do that. And uh, the, the K3 that solved this, uh, this equation here is uh, given by this form down here. So indeed, it, it is cubic uh, in A like C. And I forgot to uh, uh, mention earlier that uh, big D, that's uh, minus I, the imaginary unit times uh, partial X. So, uh, so this expression of K3, so the Hamiltonian for your transformations, um, uh, doesn't look very familiar in this form. However, um, if you introduce these uh, Hebert transform variables A like tilde and C tilde, according to this uh, definition up here, then that's how you can re-express K3. And now I would say it looks a bit more familiar because that's the Hamiltonian for a uh, Berger system. And indeed uh, the, the corresponding uh, evolution equations for A like tilde and C tilde, uh, which are given down here, um, among them, you can recognize uh, the, the well-known uh, inviscid uh, Berger's uh, equations. So to, to recap, um, the, uh, the, the normal form transformations that eliminate all the cubic terms in this problem takes uh, uh, the form of a, a PD system. Uh, involving the, uh, the, the Berger's uh, equations. So as you can see, it's, it's very compact, right? It's very, um, it's very simple, it's very generic. And that's what I said earlier, uh, in this particular case, 2D gravity waves uh, on deep water, it's a, it's a bit magical, right? Uh, the, uh, you're, you're, you're so amazed by uh, the, the simple form of this, uh, of this PD system, uh, for the normal form transformations. And by the way, uh, it's an exact representation of the, uh, of the transformations. It, it looks very simple, but it, it is exact. And again, uh, it's, it's, it's something that is a bit magical for this, uh, 
for this uh, 2D problem uh, with gravity waves on, on deep water. All right, so with this at hand, uh, um, you can further simplify the, uh, the Hamiltonian. Uh, so now uh, you no longer have uh, cubic contributions. Um, these two Poisson brackets, um, they simplify to uh, this one. And you can show that this Poisson bracket involving K3M H3 is nothing but H4 in terms of eta tilde, one of the Hebert transform variable, and, and, and C. And this is uh, the, the normal form for your reduced Hamiltonian in this problem. So uh, as I said earlier, uh, it's, it's very compact, it's very simple. Uh, uh, and, uh, and that is going to be the, uh, uh, that is going to be the, uh, uh, the, the, the basis for the derivation of the Hamiltonian dist equation. And you can find more detail in, in this paper by uh, Walter Craig and, and Catherine Sudan in 2016. All right, so next, um, next uh, you need to do some additional transformations. And uh, in particular, you'd like to, um, to um, use the uh, modulational ansatz, meaning that um, first um, you change normal modes so that you can reveal more clearly the uh, linear dispersion relation in the problem. So omega here. And then you want to change Z to uh, some uh, slowly varying envelope U depending on the uh, long spatial scale X. Uh, and epsilon is your small parameter here in this problem, times uh, some fast oscillations. So this is a sketch for these uh, transformations. So the fast oscillations are in blue. So they're given by K naught, the, the carrier wave number. And then uh, the, uh, the, the slow modu modulation in red is, uh, is determined by your function U. So, so epsilon, the small parameter here, you, you can think of it as um, either the, the, the wave steepness or the bandwidth related to the slow modulations. So, uh, so there, there are two separate length scales in this problem, big X and little x. So therefore you need to deal with that in your perturbation calculations. So this is to give you an example on how G naught would act on such a functions. Uh, and then in the end, um, what you're interested in is uh, the, the long time evolution of uh, U, the, the, the wave envelope. So therefore you can imagine that the, uh, the, the short scale variations in little x, they're going to average out to zero, right? So it's some sort of homogenization problem. I'm going to skip the detail because it's a bit technical. Uh, but basically, uh, this homogenization is key because it selects the, uh, the, the, the resonant terms, the four wave um, resonant terms in the problem. So uh, after doing all that, um, that is the, uh, the expression for the, the reduced Hamiltonian in terms of U. And what is left is only the, uh, uh, the, the resonant terms. In, uh, you can recognize some uh, non-local term. Uh, so this is highlighted in blue in the, uh, in the expression down here. So involving uh, mod uh, big TX and um, it's directly related to uh, this uh, correction H4 uh, from the um, uh, normal form transformations. And um, to, to get the evolution equation for U, or you go back to, um, to the Hamiltonian form, you take the uh, variation with respect to U bar, and um, that's the equation that you get. And this is our version, um, our Hamiltonian version of uh, uh, this equation for 2D gravity waves uh, on deep water. And again, uh, let me say it one more time, this non-local non term that I mentioned earlier, uh, in this context comes directly from the correction H4 uh, of eta tilde C, 
And therefore, it is a direct consequence of the uh, normal form transformations that eliminates uh, all the cubic terms uh, in this problem. Uh, not that uh, there's no terms in uh, u squared partial x u bar, unlike the, uh, the classical dist equation. So in some sense, uh, the Hamiltonian version is a bit simpler. Uh, and you may explain the, the, the difference um, between the Hamiltonian form and the, the non-Hamiltonian form by the fact that uh, they don't involve the, uh, the, the, same, uh, the same variables, right? So the little u and the big A, they do, they do not quite represent the same uh, physical quantity. All right, so you can repeat um, the same uh, uh, bench inference stability calculation. Uh, you get what is expected. Uh, so some NLS contribution plus some corrections to dist. So some sort of uh, Doppler shift. Um, so these are the, uh, the instability region for two different uh, sets of um, uh, web um, parameters. Um, so on this side, uh, it says that the most unstable mode, sideband mode is one. And on, on this side, it says that the most unstable mode is, is two. And so we're going to check that with some simulations. Uh, all right, so let me say uh, 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 some uh, few words about the uh, numerical method. Uh, so in space, uh, we use some pseudo-spectral method using the fast Fourier transform. In time, we use a uh, fourth order range cutter with exact integration of the linear terms. And, and here's the, the new uh, procedure. So um, you solve the Hamiltonian dist equation for uh, the, the envelope U at each uh, time step. And then to reconstruct the, uh, uh, say the surface elevation, you solve the corresponding Burgers equations for eta or eta, eta tilde. And you solve, um, you solve this um, over S, backward in S uh, from zero to minus one. So you want to invert uh, the normal form transformations with initial conditions at S equals zero given by the modulational ansatz. Right, so you want, to, you want to go back to the uh, original variables. And I claim that uh, this gives you a uh, full reconstructions of the, uh, of the free surface, uh, because as I said earlier, uh, the Berger system is an exact representation of the uh, normal form transformation that eliminates all the cubic terms in the, uh, in the system. So it's non-perturbative. And uh, it's a, a fundamentally different from the, uh, the, the classical procedure where eta is given by some uh, Stokes expansions, right? So it's a, uh, so I would say that the classical procedure is more perturbative. Uh, you use some, uh, some Stokes uh, expansions. All right, so, um, so now I'm going to, uh, to try to validate uh, uh, the approach with some uh, simulations and comparison with uh, Euler and uh, classical dist. Um, how much time do I have left, uh, Suan Sunawa? Sorry. Uh, About 10 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Um, all right, so, um, so for, for, this, uh, for this first result, uh, uh, the initial perturbation to the, uh, the periodic wave train is, uh, is weak, is mild. Um, so these are the wave profiles at t equals 8,000. Um, and because of that, um, nothing much happened. Uh, so it, uh, the, the wave profile looks very similar to the uh, in initial condition. Uh, on this side, we're comparing Hamiltonian dist with Euler. And on the other side, we're uh, comparing um, classical dist with Euler. And down here, these are the corresponding um, 
errors over time, L infinity and L2. Uh, in red, uh, that's for classical dist. In blue, that's for, for the Hamiltonian dist. So um, you can see that from the wave profiles, at least uh, it's, uh, it's very comparable, uh, but uh, more quantitatively uh, looking at the errors, I would say um, the Hamiltonian dist uh, is doing slightly better uh, because the, uh, uh, the, the corresponding errors are, are lower. Uh, this is for a uh, stronger initial perturbations. And now you can clearly see uh, the uh, development of the uh, Benjamin Friend stability at two different times, uh, t equals 370 and uh, down here t equals 820. Um, so uh, up here, this is taken at time of maximum growth and you can recognize uh, one hump, which is the most unstable mode according to the previous uh, an analysis. Again, we're comparing uh, Hamiltonian dist in blue with Euler, and on the other side, uh, classical dist in red with Euler. And uh, uh, on this side, uh, these are the corresponding errors. And um, I would say again, uh, maybe the Hamiltonian dist is doing slightly better, but the difference is not much. And this is for an even stronger initial perturbation. Again, at the time of maximum growth uh, up here, and you can recognize two humps, um, which is the, uh, the, the most uh, unstable mode according to the previous analysis. Uh, uh, and again, um, uh, the, the two comparisons involving Hamiltonian dist and, and classical dist are, are very comparable. These are the corresponding errors. And, uh, and as you can see, the difference is, is not much. Uh, this is to ch check that uh, indeed for the Hamiltonian dist equation, the corresponding Hamiltonian is uh, well conserved over time for two different um, wave regimes. So as you can see, this is 10 to negative 10, then negative 11 for time up to 8,000 on one side and, and 10,000 on the other side. So uh, yes, well conserved. Uh, so uh, with, with the NLS and dist equations, um, uh, usually when you you want to compare with time series measurements from lab experiments, you need to rewrite them in some sort of spatial form where you switch the roles of the, uh, of the X and T uh, variables. And uh, we also did that uh, for uh, our Hamiltonian uh, dist uh, model. So we, we didn't have a, a clever way to do it. Uh, and so, uh, uh, I mean, clever way in, 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 the, in the framework of the, um, uh, of the Hamiltonian method. And so we, we, we follow the, um, the, the, the traditional approach and that's what we get. Uh, and so there's, uh, there's some downside in the sense that uh, uh, it, it's no longer Hamiltonian. It's no longer Hamiltonian because uh, um, you bring back uh, this term in uh, V squared partial T uh, V bar. And because of that, uh, very likely it's, it's no longer Hamiltonian. Uh, it still conserves the, uh, the, the wave action. So this, uh, this quantity M here, um, but that's fine, right? So it, it's no longer Hamiltonian. We were uh, especially curious about how uh, the, the surface reconstruction would be affected by these transformations. And so you also need to adjust uh, the, the Berger's equations. You need to change the partial X to a partial T. That's one way to do it. And that's uh, the new form of your Berger's equations in the spatial form. And this is the corresponding initial conditions at S equals zero uh, in, this, uh, in this context. All right, and we, uh, we did some comparison. We did some comparison with uh, Keller's experiments um, taken from some, um, uh, wave tank experiments. Um, and so we, um, we, we follow what um, Lo and May did in their paper uh, when they compared the, 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 the spatial form of the classical dist equation um, to these uh, very same experiments. So these are time series uh, at uh, 
various locations down the tank. Uh, in red, uh, that's the classical dist. In blue, that's the, uh, the Hamiltonian dist. And you don't see much because they, they basically coincide. And the, the, the black circles, these are the, uh, the experimental data. So you can recognize this characteristic asymmetric shape of the wave packets over time, which is where we're produced by the, uh, by the DIS models. Uh, these figures show the, the time evolution of the, uh, of the side bands. So uh, minus one plus one, minus three plus three, relative to the uh, care web number K naught. Again, on one side, uh, that's for the Hamiltonian dist. And on the other side, uh, that's for the, um, uh, for the classical dist. And the, the different symbols, these are the, uh, the, the, the measurements from the, uh, from the lab experiments. So again, uh, uh, close and, and, and very comparable when you compare the two approximations um, to each other. Uh, this is to check the conservation of M. And uh, you can see here that um, uh, the, the Hamiltonian dist equation, and that's a bit surprising, uh, conserve M a bit better because the corresponding errors are, are smaller. But again, the difference is not much. Uh, so here we're comparing two uh, experiments by Sue. Uh, so unlike Keller's, uh, the, the wave tank here is longer. Uh, so um, again, these are the wave profiles um, at uh, various locations down the tank. So you can see that it goes up to uh, 100 meters. And uh, we're comparing uh, models and uh, measurements on the uh, maximum amplitude at each location. So the measurements and the predictions according to the two models, Hamiltonian and, and classical. And you can see that uh, it's also uh, very similar. Um, we can uh, derive a uh, 3D version of our Hamiltonian dist equation. I'm going to spare you the details. Uh, these are the final results, the corresponding dist and the corresponding Hamiltonian. Um, we're assuming that K naught, the uh, carry wave number is aligned in the X directions. And uh, accordingly um, in red, these are the uh, additional terms uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the variations in the transverse directions, uh, which is represented by big Y. So again, that's the, uh, the, the non-local term and it looks slightly more complicated than in 2D because it involved this uh, mod D uh, minus one, where D is dx dy in this uh, 3D case. Um, now, what, what about the surface reconstructions? Uh, unfortunately, uh, so you can still write down a, uh, a K3 uh, for the surface reconstructions uh, in, in 3D. Unfortunately, we're not able to uh, simplify it. Uh, it's definitely more complicated in 3D than in 2D, and we're not able to uh, simplify it to get a, a nice PD system at the end that you can solve, um, that you can solve uh, easily. Um, and therefore, um, uh, we needed to uh, make some approximations and then, uh, and therefore, uh, taking advantage of the fact that um, we have a quasi unidirectional wave motion uh, in this case. Um, you can, uh, you can take advantage of that and, and, and simplify your, your, your transformations and to leading order, not surprisingly, you recover burgers. And so we, we use that instead of the more complicated expressions for the surface reconstructions, but because you can, you can, you can more easily solve this numerically. Um, uh, this is the corresponding Benjamin Fair instability calculations for two different uh, wave regimes. Uh, unlike the 2D case, uh, the, the region of instability is uh, unbounded. That means that uh, even if your initial perturbation is confined uh, to low sideband wave numbers initially, 
the energy tends to lead to high wave numbers. And so you can see that in your simulations. And that suggests in some sense that um, the, uh, the NLS or DST approximation may be a bit questionable in 3D because, uh, because of that uh, energy uh, transfer to high wave numbers. But anyway, let me show you some simulations. Um, this is just for one case. And hopefully you're going to see uh, the, the movie. So again, we're, we're starting with some uh, uh, periodic Stokes wave. We're adding some um, small perturbations on top in both the X and uh, Y directions. So K0 is 10, uh, the sideband perturbations are one and one. So you see that over time, uh, the Benjamin Fan stability develops. It starts by being first 2D, and then over time, and that's related to the uh, energy transfer to um, high wave number that I mentioned earlier when I was discussing the Benjamin Fan stability calculation. Uh, it tends to lead to high wave numbers in both X and Y directions. Um, and so you have a, you get a sort of a mess at the end. And so I'm going to stop uh, with that. Um, so uh, one, more, one more set of figures. Uh, so uh, these are uh, cross sections showing the comparison between uh, the 3D Hamiltonian dist equation in blue and the corresponding full Euler calculation in 3D in black. So this is for the cross section in the middle, and this is for another cross section slightly on the side. Uh, so you can see that uh, it's not too bad uh, uh, at early stages of the, of the time evolution, but of course over time, as you can imagine, uh, um, um, you, you see more, um, you see more uh, differences. All right, so I'm going to stop with that. So this is a summary. Um, a new Hamiltonian dist equation is derived for both 2D and 3D gravity waves on deep water. Uh, so a, a key ingredient here is the Birkhoff normal form transformation that eliminates all the, the non-resonant cubic terms from the problem. Uh, uh, you get two think, you get two things um, with one calculation, if I may say like that. Uh, you eliminate all the cubic terms, but also this provide a, a non-perturbative uh, uh, reconstruction of so the free surface, even the wave enveloped. Uh, we did some comparison with um, regular and uh, classical dist in the context of the Benjamin Fan stability of Stokes wave. Um, uh, the agreement was good. Um, uh, you can uh, also write down a, uh, a special form of the equation and use that to compare with uh, lab experiments. And uh, also in this case, the, uh, the, the comparison was, uh, was satisfactory. And uh, with that, uh, I'm going to thank you for your attention. And uh, I would like to thank again one more time, uh, Sunao and the other organizers for uh, running this uh, fantastic uh, online seminar series uh, for the past year or so, I, I believe. So thanks very much. Uh, and um, back to you, Sunao. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Gwen. Uh, thank you very much, uh, very nice presentation. Uh, so now let's open questions and comments from the audiences. Uh, do you have any questions? I may ask you questions about, uh, the, I'm very interested in this approach using Hamiltonian, particularly, you know, uh, derivation of uh, uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation using multi apple scale is very, usually very uh, lengthy and tedious. So uh, uh, it seems uh, that this approach uh, is much simpler than uh, using uh, uh, multiple scale method. And uh, also, uh, as you pointed out in the uh, conclusion, you know, uh, the, to eliminate non-important non terms uh, is very attractive. 
uh, for me. Uh, 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 is it, uh, have you, uh, uh, I mean, uh, is it possible to uh, apply uh, this elimination of no important terms for the other model, for, for example, shallow water case? So um, you, you, could, you, you could do that. Uh, um, in this well, case, you know, we, we already the, know. Uh, uh, water uh, case. Sorry. Technically, you can. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, I mean, in, in this case, in the case of deep water waves, we already know, you know, the third order terms are not, that, not important. Uh, but uh, how about in the case of shallow water case? Uh, uh, is it possible? Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. Yes, please. So you, you uh, yeah, in, in shallow water, you, um, you you don't want to eliminate the cubic terms. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that 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 resonant, that's mm. important. Mm. So in shallow water, uh, in, in shallow water, um, uh, the, the cubic terms are uh, the, the dominant uh, nonlinear contributions. Mm. So you don't want to eliminate them. You mm. can't because they're important. It's important. Which is not the case on deep water. Mm. In, in, on deep water, the cubic terms, they're not important. Mm. That's why um, we would like to, uh, to remove them, mm. right? But on shallow water, uh, they're important. So you don't want to remove them. You have mm. to keep them. So, so that's why uh, you, don't want to, uh, you, you don't want to apply a, a similar, a, a similar um, uh, procedure. Mm. So, in the shallow water case, uh, all terms are required. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, I would say, uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 in shallow water, I would say, uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong and people would, uh, uh, may disagree with that, but in some sense, uh, the, the calculations, and of course it, it may depend on the model as well, but in some sense, the, the calculations are, uh, are simpler because uh, you don't have that step to remove uh, to remove the cubic terms. Mm -hmm. Of course, the calculation may be tedious because uh, uh, um, you, you may you may need to do some special transformations to uh, to reduce the system. Uh, you may need, you may need to go to higher order. So mm -hmm. the calculation may be uh, may be of course uh, tedious as well in shallow water, but you don't have that uh, step to remove the cubic terms. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, which is a pretty uh, uh, a pretty tough calculation. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Oh. 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 <laughs> Everything was clear. Everything was clear. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, and also, it was interesting to me. You, know, you changed the T and the X in the uh, in, in your talk. In, in, in you changed the T and the X. As a, uh, could you? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, ah, uh, uh, yes, please. Yeah, so uh, when you want to compare to, uh, say, lab experiments, yes. so, uh, what people usually do in lab experiments is that they, they, they put uh, sensors so we have at uh, different locations along the tank, mm. and each sensor would uh, measure a uh, time series of, say, the free surface, right? Mm. So therefore, uh, what, you don't, what, what you don't want to do is to uh, uh, fix T and measure over x. Mm. That's typically what you you would do when you have a an evolution equations. So therefore, if you want to compare with lab experiments, what you want to do is that you want to fix x mm. and measure over t. Mm. So therefore, that's why you need to write to to rewrite the equation in a special form where you switch x uh, and t. So you can do this recursively by uh, ah, yeah by 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 changing. Mm. The the, the 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 x derivative into t derivative in the equations. Oh. So we follow the the, tr the traditional approach, 
mm. by using our Hamiltonian dist equations, and we're able to uh, to write down a spatial form. The thing is that uh, when when you follow the the traditional approach, even by starting from a Hamiltonian dist equation, you lose that property, mm. and you get a spatial form that is in fact non-Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. So um, th that that was uh, the the downside a little bit. However, uh, what was interesting was to test uh, the, the, the surface reconstruction in this case, mm. which is uh, solving the Burgers equations. Mm. So you, you still need to, to write down a spatial form for the Burgers equations, but it's still new compared to the traditional approach. And that's one of the things that we want to, to test uh, mm. when we want to compare with uh, lab experiments. And as, as I showed uh, in, in the figures, uh, it's, uh, it's um, yeah, it's, uh, it was uh, it gave uh, uh, it gave good results. Mm, I see. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Of course, uh, I, I forgot to mention that. Uh, Maybe some future work. Uh, uh -huh, so I yeah. give a sort of summary of the results, but uh, you, you may ask about um, possible future work. And one thing would be to extend this to the, the finite depth case. Finite. Mm -hmm. So uh, by still using some Hamiltonian method, mm -hmm. the finite depth, which uh, so we're, we're thinking about it, uh, and it's uh, definitely an interesting um, problem, but of course, it's, uh, it's much more uh, complicated. On deep water, you no longer gonna have this tench, right? Mm. In expression relations. Mm. So you need to have mod and that make things uh, significantly uh, easier, even easier mm. in the 2D case. But now if you move to, uh, to find a depth, whether it is 2D or 3D, uh, uh, it, it's going to be more complicated in particular for the surface reconstructions. Mm. I see. Mm. It's very interesting. Mm. I, I don't know if it is very interesting to write down a finite depth dist equation. So I, I don't. Maybe this is a question for John. I mean, uh, uh, to me, uh, dist is more is more uh, is more interesting uh, for deep water. Uh, are people really interested in a dist uh, on finite depth? I don't know. Uh, uh, what do you think, this? Uh, what What do you think, uh, John? John, yes, please. Oh, uh, uh, John, okay. you, uh, micro, your microphone is off. Better? Uh, no, yes, it's better. Yes, now, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I believe that the finite depth case is, of course, very uh, interesting. Uh, the um, real, real address C is Karsten Truls, my colleague. And, and they are doing a lot of simulations uh, at finite depths, but they, they use other models too. They use uh, they use the uh, say uh, um, uh, uh, the um, oh what uh, the the, the uh, more direct uh, calculations, but the finite depth yes, that is very important. He's not using, uh, they are not using uh, Hamiltonian uh, variation. Uh, so, so it's, um, but finite depth, yes, of course, that does, that is the most interesting range. And finite depth is finite depth is, 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 uh, is uh, maybe uh, deep water and it is intermediate depth and so on. So, so uh, there are a lot of interesting parameters there, yes. All right, so I guess we should do that then. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I think it's, uh, it's yeah, yeah. It's I agree. It's it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting, but uh, yeah, definitely more complicated. So, uh, and in particular, the, the I think the the, the the current term is also more complicated. Uh, the, the the mean flow term, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's more complicated, and uh, especially in, in in finite depth. And that reminds me about uh, John's talk, where uh, I, uh, I believe I don't know uh, the, uh, 
the, the, is, is the current in, in, in Poland in, in the uh, in the experiments? Uh, is there some return flow? Or, uh, I'm not sure. Yes, there is a return flow. Yes, of course. Uh, it's a balance. <laughs> okay. We measured that. Th that that was that was the reason for this uh, net flux in the integral. Yes. Yeah, yeah, net that's flux. right. Yeah. But I, I wanted yeah. just to 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 have a, a comment to to your talk, Philip. It's it's actually uh, there are some years since we uh, haven't met, and we still meet uh, a lot on 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 the internet, which is very good. Um, I was uh, happy to see uh, I, um, all the names of your team, in, in including Walter Craig, who passed away so so sadly a few years ago, and um, so that gives an extra dimension to your talk, actually. Thank you, thank you, John. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gru and Dr. F uh, Dr. Gwen. Has very nice talk and uh, your contribution. Thank you very much. Okay.